All right, Doombots, you guys asked. Here it is, my next team review. AIM. Now, uh, I'm going to tell you a couple things. First of all, uh, I love AIM. AIM is one of my most uh, favorite teams to play with in every game mode that I can bring them in, and they are useful in quite a bit of game modes. They are soft or hard counters to teams, depending on investment on both sides. They can pretty easily do uh, some content in the game that other teams might not be able to do. Uh, I really enjoy them, and I think that as far as late and end game teams go, I think AIM is a great all-around investment. Um, that said, when you know when I do my reviews, I do availability, usability, and of course breakdowns for investment, as well as where they're useful uh, at what stages of the game. So as we go through this video, we're going to discuss every aspect of the AIM team. This video probably won't be much longer than most, but there are more characters in AIM than many other completed teams, and some of them do deserve a little bit more of, uh, I guess, attention than others. So obviously to start this off, we're just going to go straight into a blitz fight against uh, pretty much anyone, but I'm pretty sure this team is probably going to be okay as we discuss the AIM character's availability. So AIM is uniquely available in the game, as in every character does have the ability to be farmed, starting with some of the easier ones. You have AIM Infector in the Raid Store, AIM Researcher in the Arena Store, and AIM Monstrosity in the Blitz Store. Now, of those three characters, AIM Infector is the weakest of all AIM characters, and is usually one of the first ones to be replaced, usually by Graviton. And Researcher, while a very competent healer in her own right, and all in all a good character, uh, is not quite necessary when Scientist Supreme comes in. So as far as the minions are concerned, of those three, the only one that really holds their weight is Monstrosity, as far as being an, a damage dealer that does their best. Uh, the other characters, uh, Security, is available in Villains 5. Scientist Supreme is available in Cosmic 2-9, which is basically Cosmic 3 at that point. And Aim Assaulter is Heroes 5. So I think it goes without saying that since uh, the core of the Aim team is not accessible to any player in the very early stages of the game, uh, I think it's obvious that this is not an early game team. Now, obviously that goes without saying if you're willing to spend money or have any amount of, of uh, investment, uh, both financially or through, uh, if you're creating an all and letting your main alliance take you around, uh, you have the uh, availability to work on an end game team early, which will in fact, of course, help you. I didn't even mention that Graviton's available in the War Store because it's really hard to farm characters in the War Store, and he is one of the most important members of the AIM team. That said, AIM is an incredibly usable team. In Gamma, there are required lanes that say AIM. Uh, they're also useful in the Villains 7 campaign, which of course you can't access till you're level 71 and have completed at least the first fight of Heroes anyway, but don't worry about that. That makes them, obviously, the end game choice. Working on them early doesn't help you with that at all. No questions there, I think. But they are good. Right? They're useful in war, they're an adequate blitz team, as you just saw. They can accomplish a great deal. Uh, but overall, just like some of the other reviews I've given you, the AIM team is kind of anchored around the strength of two characters, that being Scientist Supreme and Graviton. So while they are available at certain stages of the game, the ones that are available early are not uh, as worthwhile as some of the other options, for example. Uh, Aim Infector is not a character in the raid store I am actively looking to farm when there are characters like Rocket or Sabretooth or, you know, characters that help you progress your overall roster. Uh, so I wouldn't necessarily work on him, especially because he's the first one to be removed from the team, basically for any reason. Assaulter is absolutely phenomenal on the Aim team. So great, but again, being tagged behind the fifth node in either the Villains or Heroes campaign, like Aim Security, uh, definitely means you're not going to start getting a lot of work on either of those characters early. Uh, so I wouldn't 
recommend looking for these characters too early i would probably work a little bit more on characters that you know kind of help you develop your roster uh, aim researcher is one of the better actual healers in the game as she has an aoe heal um, she does get replaced on her team but she does have a little bit of extra value on alternate teams ultimately not a character in the arena store especially when there are characters like daredevil juggernaut drax vulture characters that again help you progress your roster so i wouldn't go too deep into aim researcher aim monstrosity is a hundred shard unlock out of the blitz store and if you can't think of a single character you'd rather unlock out of the blitz store than aim monstrosity have fun i guess and of course scientist supreme is cosmic 2-9 so i don't know what magic mythical cosmic team um working on the aim early would help you get to be able to progress in that game mode or what specific cosmic characters you can easily access that aren't the guardians of the galaxy but you know you might be able to spend money or, or get through uh, ultimately this just kind of solidifies aim as the quintessential mid to end game uh, team um, especially as you uh, progress towards unlocking legendaries and then you start taking war a little bit more seriously so availability they're available more so than some of the other teams but when and where kind of defines when you would want to work on them very similar to fantastic four while some of the characters are incredibly available early the team itself uh, while not as usable as aim um it just really isn't worth the early stage investment so uh, going to that straight into usability now let's see what we can use aim so uh, we already talked about villain 7 1 which is of course very, by definition end game you have to be level 71 to even enter it and have accomplished other tasks so i wouldn't worry too much about uh getting them there uh, as the first or even second or fifth team you work on but as uh, independent characters on that team, for example, Scientist Supreme, Aim Researcher, and Aim Security are incredibly good. Had you worked on characters uh, like some of the Hydra minions or the entire Sinister Six, you could probably put together a mishmash team that will help you overall. So uh, while I did use a mostly Aim team when I defeated that node, as you can tell, my Aim and all my characters are very high invested in, so I've been playing the game for quite a long time, uh, they are good. Uh, on war they are great on actually both sides of the war early stages of war you want to use them on defense because they really don't uh, get countered by too much they either get punched down by a great deal or they need a relatively strong defenders team because the defenders will always beat aim uh, when they're being controlled by a player so if you think that you're seeing an awful lot of defenders on offense or not many on defense that implies that a lot of people are able to beat them so then they shift into a practical war offense team in which they have quite a bit of value they are capable of punching across and in very very high investment cases uh, we're talking the three to four hundreds punching up against teams like as guardians um, they're overall an okay setup so they do have usability in pretty much every game mode and if you saw my uh character rating series where i rated characters based on their greek raid ability as well as u7 uh one aim character stands out among all of them and that's scientist supreme scientist supreme uh, does have a lot of additional value in the end of the game but not really anything she does helps you in the early game you don't really need her debuff flip because none of the early and mid game content uh, relies on you uh, not having heal block or anything like that you usually work your way through that by just being uh, better teams and that content is old and since science supreme has been recently reworked she's only really amazing in some of the newer content uh, as far as arena uh, no absolutely not uh, this team will be beaten by anyone who has defenders in a punch-up just because of the extra bonus to villains uh, so for defense not going to happen as far as an offense team uh, scientist supreme is just kind of really bad on, on uh, Any side of arena because what she offers doesn't necessarily impact uh, Invested characters it always impacts things that um, Reach at parity so scientist supremes uh, heal that puts debuffs on characters might fail the focus check now you may be able to squeeze a couple of victories here or there but ultimately the players who invested in characters that uh, overall are stronger or more usable across the board 
or even if they're a little bit more niche like maybe the uh, as guardians yeah maybe the as guardians are one of the best early game spending teams but starting by the time you actually get all of them you might as well have just bought the as guardians because whatever new hotness came out will definitely do its work against them so they do have a lot of usability they can be used in u6 eventually the investment might be a little bit higher than some of the others but it's very similar to the guardians actually there is a equal number or almost equal number of tech bio uh, instead of mystic it's skill characters so you can invest properly and you get a lot of value out of the in-team but once you reach the true uh, end game content which is u7 and of course the u7 slider uh, you very rarely see many other characters other than just scientist supreme or scientist supreme and graviton used in u7 not to say they couldn't be it's just many people invest in characters that overall improve their roster a little bit more scientist supreme as a standalone is a phenomenal character in u7 right now as we move the difficulty slider up that might change but for right now she is a very useful character uh, especially because of her res and her ability to control blinds and stuff like that so ultimately while usable um, they, they kind of fall into the same usability slot as teams like the Wakandans. Uh, they are as usable as the Wakandans for the most part uh, when it comes to raids or where you can uh, uh, accomplish tasks with them. And it, great. Uh, the only major difference is that eventually your investment in the Wakandans will end up with high red stars and eventually your investment in AIM will end up with a war team and a blitz team. So uh, all in all, usable. Um, good at what they do very good at countering teams uh, in war specific teams like if you happen to see a brotherhood team or anything like that but um, at what cost uh, they are truly an end game team a late to end game team um, and even if you start working them on the mid game you're not going to really start feeling the value of the team until much later anyway so now I want to go into breakpoints um, you know how it works uh, in general the aim team is kind of impressive uh, in that they do what they do at any level, but the higher you invest in them, it's almost exponential growth instead of just uh, one for one growth. The uh, stronger your aim assaulter is, the more the multi shot will do, uh, or the stronger your aim security is, the crazier it is when they try to kill her. So we're going to start with the bottom and we'll work our way up. I think this order probably makes the most sense. So we'll go with aim infector. Uh, aim infector, as you can tell from mine, uh, is not really useful uh, for the aim team. Now there's probably corner cases where under one circumstance and a punch up against a very specific team, aim infector might have helped someone win a story and that story is great. They could take a picture of it, they could put it on their fridge and everyone can talk about how it happened. That said, aim infector is pretty useless on this team overall. If you never unlocked him, you'd probably be better off. He takes bio gear. I regret everything I've ever put into him. Uh, right now, he is part of the worst blitz team I use, which features the Ravager minions, aim uh, infector, and of course Nebula, the worst character in the game. So uh, ultimately, basically the Hydra Grenadier of the aim team, uh, first to be replaced. Uh, sure, there's some usability, and they have counter attacks and cool stuff that, but again utility version of a character that's only good in some situations doesn't make them make the cut so as far as what investments I'm gonna put in them I would say none um, two random negative effect, none I'm not even talking about this anymore uh, aim assaulter is probably one of the mainstays of the aim team the same way as aim security the reason why is juicer um, adjacent uh, aim allies uh, get speed bar by 10% and it gets more damage and health uh, and of course you can tier 4 this which is a great investment if you are going hard into aim because it turns the adjacent speed bar to 20% which means that your aim is just taking more turns and since uh, aim assaulter represents a lot of single target damage quite often you're probably gonna be okay that said one of the downsides of aim assaulter is that hyperdose where uh, they attacks the target multiple times uh, based on the number of negative effects that character has only procs if this character has a negative effect on them and since aim is incredibly good now at not having negative effects through scientist supreme or pretty much anything it's very situational that said you always want to fire it off to gain that speed up because every turn that aim assaulter takes every adjacent character will always take 10 to 20 percent more of their turn meter and it just makes them go faster so at least firing this off while they have 
a couple of stacks of speed up or zero to make sure they have a couple left is pretty good and then save it just in case you do get that one big attack um, as far as submachine gun it's just damage and bleed no notes probably one of the best overall characters and one of the characters that stays in the team basically no matter what happens the other character would be aim security uh, immunization says on attack if science supreme is an ally when above 75 percent transfer one negative effect from self and each other aim ally so of course this right there says that if you don't have scientist supreme she loses a big chunk of her value i don't necessarily believe that the resistance is that important especially because if you look you really want her to get the debuffs and then throw them onto other people so the resistance is not that important plus a lot of the kit on their own isn't uh conducive to having uh debuff it doesn't hurt so you should be fine the only one that really worries is i guess heal block or disrupt but it is what it is uh gain taunt for one turn uh slow for two turns heal self and adjacent aim allies uh that makes placement on this very relevant depending on what you're doing uh, for example, if you're doing PvE content, like a campaign node or a raid, you probably don't want this character at the end. You probably want them somewhere in one of the back two slots. This way they're getting a larger heal, and also it'll reduce any chaining by having an opportunity for the chain to go uh, into one character and stop, as opposed to guaranteed chaining to multiple characters across the lines, especially since none of the aim characters inherently gain um, stealth. So... Uh, but ultimately clear speed up on self huge buff uh, you want her as far away from uh, assaulter as possible you don't want her taking multiple turns you want her to tank for literally ever she takes damage very well uh, she sustains through a lot of it and of course the most important thing to note is that ultimately um, as long as she's taking damage the squishier members of your team aren't and the damage dealers aren't uh, moving on to the next one is a monstrosity a monstrosity is a very useful character uh, it tends to be replaced with characters like Ultron when you're fighting as Guardians in War, just because Ultron packs a bigger punch. But just like the others, uh, on spawn, gain defense down, on turn, heal for 15 up to 20% max health. Cool. Uh, sudden evolution gains offense up after attacking, but applies offense up to three turns to adjacent aim allies, which of course means you want him near some of the damage dealers. Now, he doesn't necessarily need to be directly next to Assaulter. Assaulter is taking enough turns that damage up is only going to matter once in a blue moon. You definitely want this character uh, adjacent to Graviton at the very least, because Graviton is the main damage dealer of the team. And if you have to, put him next to Security. This way, Security's basic when it happens every other turn or so. Uh, will actually make them do some amount of damage. And Graviton, since he's the most important damage dealer on the team, probably okay. Uh, as far as Bash, it's just an attack with a pretty, pretty... Like, there's no reason to put this investment in. 90% versus 100% for 180 tier 4s. I don't know how many tier 4s you have, but I don't even have enough to think this 10% is worth it. At this point, if, if this was 100% here and this was another 80 damage, I'd be more inclined to spend it. But... It's not. 90% chance to apply defense down. Not hurt, helping or hurting anybody. You should be okay. Uh, moving into Graviton, uh, one of the marquee characters on the fight. Graviton is great. Everything he does is awesome. Way to the world real quick just to show you. Whenever an enemy drops below 50% health, extend the duration of all negative effects they have by one up to a maximum of five. Aim puts negative defects on characters, so the more damage they do, the more damage they're going to end up taking. It's going to end up feeding very well. Uh, aim minions gain an extra 10 or 20 with tier 4's uh, damage. This is kind of like when you've decided to go in on aim, this is probably one of the most important tier 4's you can put in because the minions on the team need that extra damage boost, but they do get health. And then in war, either side, on his turn, reduce speed bar of the enemy with the highest speed, not speed bar, speed stat by 25%. And in war, whenever an enemy drops below 75% health, Apply Disrupted, huge for countering very specific teams, like as Guardian, he really does a lot of work. And this is just as long as he's alive. So keeping him alive is very important in these fights. Uh, singularity, just damage, you know how I feel. Um, he is the damage dealer on the team, but that extra damage, 50%, not enough. This is really about the stun. As for, oops, Crushing Force. Crushing Force is one of the coolest features he has. Attack primary target and adjacent targets. So it's just an AOE, slow, very similar to Quake's basic. 
uh, up to a maximum of five primary target and adjacent target slows. So you're putting a lot of slows, you're taking a lot of extra turn meter with uh, your comp. This is going to help them a lot. And if Scientist Supreme is an ally, which she always is, uh, apply bleed to primary target and adjacent target. It's a lot of bleed. Again, level seven here, uh, it increases the damage here, but it also increases the damage to bleed. So it's a little bit better than the old, uh, especially because while you look at this as 60% damage, uh, it's always hitting multiple targets instead of just one. So it's actually like a grand total of 180% extra damage, plus the extra bleed stack damage as obviously bleed stacks scale with the level of the ability. I believe this is 135%. It's not a, not a fake number, especially if he has offense up. So pretty reasonable. And then gravity well uh, is adorable. Uh, and this is actually a very good tier four investment. Again, if you're working exclusively on aim, because going for 250 bonus damage, that's not much. But the going that extra 25%, since it's per negative effect, and since all the team does is put negative effects in, that 25% can ultimately end up being an extra 100 or 150% damage as it's added up among the debuffs. If you've ever seen him take a really strong, a really high health character immediately out of the fight with his basic because of all the debuffs they had, you'll know this is one of the biggest hitting attacks he has. So he is the prime damage dealer on the team. You want to make sure that he stays alive and keeps everything going with a couple of decent tier 4 investments. Aim Researcher, and I know it sounds weird that I'm going in here, but Aim Researcher also has a little bit of extra utility. Antidote, on term, choose one random ally to apply one random positive effect from this list. Uh, now, of course, you can tier 4 to guarantee it. I don't know if that's particularly relevant. On her team, it definitely is, as uh, it always implies her speed bar 4 aim. But outside of it, which is probably where you're going to be using her most of all, usually on a Blitz team or just as a healer for any node that requires skill characters, if it's villain skill or something like that. Who knows? The idea is that Antidote is a pretty decent upgrade overall. Um, if on the aim team they guaranteed get two applies if it tags, cool. Uh, she is a great kit character. She is a great healer. But again, keep in mind, this works for anyone. Aim just gets it always. So on the full aim team, this is a great buff. Uh, surgery drone, this is phenomenal. Uh, heal lowest health ally and adjacents for 6,000. So whoever the lowest health ally in your team is, and anyone next to them is going to take a giant heal, she is a phenomenal healer. It's kind of like a better night nurse. Uh, in that the heal is very targeted, but uh, it also has a percentage chance to flip bleed on the lowest health ally and any of their adjacents, and this is after the heal, so pretty cool. Uh, as for the level 7, the tier 4, always flip bleed, meh. I don't know how many fights you have where bleeds are coming up all the time where you need her and this, but ultimately it's pretty cool. Also notice, no use of the word aim, which means she does it on any team, making her a very viable healer outside of it uh the extra heal for seven thousand instead of six thousand it's not additive it just changes it that one thousand doesn't matter it's the 15 percent of her health and the reason why if you take a quick look she has a pretty ridiculous chunk of health uh, she has pretty ridiculous armor she's relatively tanky even with my high red stars on her at gear tier 10 imagine the investment she is she is quite good as a matter of fact she's a skill character we're gonna bring her to 11 live why She's not bad. I use her in a lot of other content. She's one of my favorite characters uh, in the game as far as utility is concerned, uh, and her rework really helped a lot. Also, cute little dress. So Scientist Supreme being the marquee character of this team. Scientist Supreme is great in a lot of different game modes. That said, when you look at her tier fours, uh, there's not many that are required. So checking out real quick, aim allies are revived with 5% max health. Doesn't increase their chance, just gives them a little bit more health. Cool. Again, going all in on aim, totally worth it. Outside of it, met. On turn, grant one to two ability energy to all aim allies with a negative effect as opposed to just one. Yeah, you know, we've already said that first ability was worth it if you're going all in on aim, so you just get that for free. I don't think either of them independently are worth it. And if it was any non-aim ally, that's fine, but again, it only affects them with negative effects, and since she doesn't put negative effects on them anymore, uh, you can't really control how often that happens, so not super great. Retro vaccine, uh, no. Uh, unfortunately, this is an investment you kind of have to do 
uh, on the full lane team because that 50% extra focus instead of 25 is very relevant depending on how many aim characters are on the fight, especially if you're using them in, I would say arena, even though I know it's not true, but definitely in war because you definitely want those debuffs to stick on the full aim team and since it's 50% per aim ally for this fight, you really only need two aim characters to guarantee um, 100% extra focus, etc. And obviously you can get a ridiculous more. Now she does have a decent chunk of focus to begin with, just to show you real quick. Uh, it's among the higher focus pools you can have, even with my investment level. So she shouldn't be missing too much, but you know, if you're working on the aim team as a full team and you really want them to be super strong for one reason or another, this is totally worth it. Uh, field Trials is the uh, most important one for my uh, for my uses anyway, since I use her for U7. And yes, I know it seems crazy that you're only flipping one additional negative effect until uh, you have more than three negative effects in a character and then that extra negative effect flip can be the difference. Now this is pretty much the bread and butter of why Scientist Supreme is great, especially in some of the end game content. Uh, don't regret this investment at all. Making sure that the characters that could be dead to bleed stacks end up healing instead, absolutely huge. And again, since this isn't a dispel like JJ, since it's a flip, sometimes it's the difference between uh, completely getting decimated in a fight and everyone getting death proof. Uh, a lot of this is huge. This investment up to six will be great. The second you have the opportunity to or you realize you're having a hard time making the... Uh, characters stay alive through a lot of debuffs. The level seven will make her useful not only on her team in general, but of course on uh, any team you tend to use her in as she is one of the most usable characters on her entire team uh, in endgame. And Serum Pistol, uh, nothing to say on this. Damage, two negative effects. Now, there are only three random negative effects from the pool it pulls from, slow, offense down, defense down. So if it ever applies defense down and offense down, you won. Slow is probably handled by some of the other characters on the team, but basically you can't lose. You know, I, what I will say is if you ever really want the offense down, you won't get it. If you ever really want the slow, it's not going to happen. And if you ever really need the defense down, no. <laughs> but that said, she has, like I said, she has pretty good focus. The two random uh, negative effects are great. And one of the reasons that's so important for her is because uh, as you start using her for endgame content, you don't want to auto with her because she's going to use that heal because even if your entire team is at full power uh it it won't she won't care she'll see the two to three negative effects and think that's the ability so she will always fire off that negative effect pool and if you're not using her on the aim team that becomes a liability on the aim team it's great it just keeps those debuffs up so that the other characters can take advantage of it off the aim team i don't know that basic is more important off the aim team than anywhere else so i don't know if i would necessarily tier for it for 40 percent extra damage um and since there's no bleed stacks involved ever it's not going to do too much but ultimately okay so the breakpoints on this team as far as look, tier fours are done breakpoints on this team are a little bit weird so uh 80 to 100k this team uh, will be able to do some work especially if you're using the comp that i showed you earlier in the fight uh, that team will be able to punch up a reasonable amount against a lot of characters uh, and even as a war defense team until like as kind of a placeholder like leave them there will still require a response from your opponent that's not just uh, a handful of stronger characters it does risk demand a little bit of respect uh, the stronger they get once they get to the 150 to 200k range well now they're doing some real work now they're probably able to easily complete any uh, nodes you put them on um, especially if you're subbing in researcher for monstrosity because you don't need the damage but you can use a little bit of extra sustain graviton stays alive a little bit longer and you're just doing a ton of extra work uh, on any raid node you might be using them for uh, even if you do happen to bring them into dark dimension 2 because you have uh, for some reason an excess amount of materials and no one else better to put them in and you really wanted the challenge um, yeah, you could probably have a great time investing uh, a decent amount in the characters from 150 to 200k. Once they get over 200k, for example, minus 233k, that's where the fun starts. So my full aim team without Ultron, the team you saw earlier, 
uh, is usually capable of defeating the Asgardians up to about my 223 if you saw uh, up to about maybe just under 300k once they push over 300k I replace a monstrosity with Ultron and everything else is pretty much straight so there is a lot of value in this team the more you invest in them but much like any other team the stronger they are the better they are duh right so they are really good but you don't need to put a lot into them to get uh, a decent amount of value out of them they do scale though uh, very well with how much you put into them especially because as characters go they have among the top 10 each individual minion has among the top 10 of a specific stat. Monstrosity has one of the highest health pools in the game, as does Researcher. Security has one of the highest armors, as well as, uh, I guess, a little bit of stacked health. Uh, Aim Assaulter has some of the highest damage in the game. Uh, they are really a well-stacked minion team. They are all in all a great rework team. Uh, I look forward to Modok when uh, he comes out, and hopefully, I wish you could use aim to unlock him, but you'll probably just end up using whatever new characters they came out with. So that's my goal. Now, if I had to give this team a rating, this is an A team. Absolutely, no questions asked. Usable in a lot of game modes, uh, at a very low investment. The investment you put in them is not very important. Uh, you don't need it. Specific characters like Scientist Supreme are very, very, very good. Uh, Science Supreme and Graviton work very well with the symbiote characters uh, in U7, at least up to a point anyway. So you will get a lot of value out of them, but just in their sheer usability alone across kind of every game mode, uh, they do get the A quality. The reason they, I hold back on the S is they have some very, very glaring, glaring abilities. And uh, when you think S team, you think, wow, this team can do everything, like X-Men. Um, Aim can't necessarily beat Colson Shield in a punch up. You know, Aim doesn't necessarily uh, immediately take out Marauders. There, there are some hard fights in the. Um, it's not as automatic as some of the S tier teams. That said, it's usable in a lot of different game modes. It is one of the best, if not the best, end game team uh, for different levels of content. It has one of the better characters in the entire game. So. A tier, top top of the line, worth it, uh, worth investing in once you've passed through and gotten a bunch of legendaries and have been able to unlock Ultron and seen a lot of progress, this team will do a lot of work for you. Uh, that said, uh, feel free to comment below and let me know what you think. Uh, I don't think anyone in the world is going to come in and say AIM's not a good team, uh, because they are. But let me know how early you got AIM uh, and how you did so. And what they're doing for you right now. Are you 200 days played with a 400k aim team and you invest in them the way some players used to invest in defenders? Are you 700 days played and you brought aim up because you were bored and they looked really fun? You know, let me know what your aim team is doing for you or if you're excited about it or kind of anything because aim is really fun. They are one of my most uh, enjoyable teams that I play with, especially in Blitz. So, comment below let me know what you think anyway thank you guys so much for watching have a good night have a great day i've been tony skinjili and i'll catch you later